Welcome to Mid-Missouri Art News. Uh, today, we visit with artist Faye Zumwalt, who will share with us what has happened in her art world since uh, being a, a previous guest here on the show uh, back in uh, 2016, if you recall. And also today, the featured artist and spokesperson for the Jefferson City Art Club. In addition, I have a surprise for you. We will visit with Marcia Menendez of the Best of Missouri Hands. Welcome to JCTV Spotlight on the Arts, Mid-Missouri Art News, supported by many art enthusiasts, coming to you from the capital city of Missouri, that's Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm your host, Rick Jay, with two special guests, artist and spokesperson for the Jefferson City Art Club, Faye Zumwalt, and promoter of art, Marshall Menendez. I ask you to turn with me and uh, welcome our first guest, uh, Ms. Faye Zumwalt. Um. Hello, and welcome to my studio. Thank you, Rick, for having me back on Mid-Missouri Art News once again. I'm here to tell you some of the things I've been doing since we last talked. I really enjoy painting with several media, and I think that what I do in one medium helps me do better in all of the other media as well. Oil painting was my first serious pursuit of art as an adult. Since we last were recorded, I have done mostly portraits and pet portraits, including this one of my cat, Jackson. My current favorite is silk painting. I paint silk scarves such as the one that I am wearing here and such as these others that are behind me. The first over here is simple stripes that I painted with a large brush and I sprinkled salt to make the paint disperse in certain areas. The second was done by a resist method. Resist so that I could corral the paint where I wanted them. I call this one tiger lilies, even though I really know that tiger lilies have spots and not stripes. The next is a new method that I've had so much fun with. This is marbling, and it's done by floating my paint on top of a chemical addition to water, and then I lay the silk down on top of that floating paint. I also used that technique for this scarf. So you can see how I can get several patterns from the same technique. The last one I have here, the hearts, was done with stamps. I used some purchased stamps, but I also carved some of my own to make kind of this graffiti look. I have taught and demonstrated silk painting at Capital Arts several times in Jefferson City. I serve on their board of directors and my silk scarves are always on display in their gallery. I have prints and cards made from my paintings all the time and I also have my original artwork that rotates in and out based on what the themed exhibit is at any one time. I've also been enjoying pastels. My recent pastel zinnias and pears on a plate. I seem to loosen up when painting with pastels because the paper 
can only contain so much pigment before it's saturated. I've been having fun with the medium and I enjoy the ease of cleanup compared to oils. My latest project that's not even framed yet is peaches on a plate. It will be a companion to my pears on a plate. Since my last interview, I've painted several watercolor paintings, including some florals. What I find is that watercolor painting and silk painting have a lot in common. I've also painted a few acrylic paintings, such as my dad's lake. When I saw the light play over the dock and the lake that day, and I photographed it, I just really enjoyed how the patterns looked. So I really felt compelled to capture that in a painting. Another recent acrylic is my Over Riviera Maya. It is taken from a photograph I shot while I was on a vacation several years ago with my husband Bill. And it reminds me of a nice time. The sun had almost set when I shot this shot and I just really, it reminds me of that fun time. I've also played around with port acrylic method including this painting, which is an abstracted view of a landscape. I've played just a little bit with clay, including this little fairy house for a fairy garden, which was just playful. I also have fun participating in a card making club and a scrapbooking club. Now this is really a craft rather than an art because paper crafting uses products designed by other artists and so therefore it's not my original work. I use these products to make my own original cards and scrapbook pages from them. I have fun with the card club and in these the leaders will design a pattern for the evening and then the others will follow what they have done and then put their own spin on it if they'd like. I try to continuously learn more in all of the media that I work in, um, in different art and craft forms. I try to pick up just a little bit from every teacher that I'm privileged to work with and try to pick up on some of their best work. I also like to mention that I'm a volunteer, several ways to support art in the area. I'm currently serving on a committee to create a mural depicting the history of Tebbets, Missouri, where I grew up. I've drawn several designs for this mural as have other people and we use these with the public to try to determine what people think is the most important piece of Tebbets rich history to depict on this mural. While I'm with you I want to talk about Jefferson City Art Club which has begun their program season for the year. Jefferson City Art Club welcomes all artists to their meetings which occur from, from May to September each year and we meet on the third Monday evening of each month in Hawthorne Banks Community Room at 3600 Amazonas Drive in Jefferson City, Missouri. In addition, November 8th, we invite all viewers to the Fall Fling from 6 to 9 p.m also at Hawthorne Banks Community Room. The Fall Fling is a social event we sh where we share art with the community for the love of art and to celebrate the 116 years of Jefferson City Art Club. 
You can watch for more about this on JCTV on Mid-Missouri Art News. I am the Jefferson City Art Club featured artist on their website from November 2nd through December 14th and invite you to log on to see my paintings at www.jeffersoncityartclub-missouri.com You may also see my original artwork at the Jefferson City Division of Motor Vehicles during this same time frame. Well that's about all for today. Thank you Rick for having me here in my studio and I'd like to invite everybody to stay tuned because there's a lot more to come here on Mid-Missouri Art News. The Crayon Box That Talked While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and green said, nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. We are a box of crayons that doesn't get along, said blue to all the others. Hmm, something here is wrong. Well, I bought that box of crayons and took it home with me and laid out all the colors so the crayons could all see. They watched me as I colored with red and blue and green and black and white and orange and every color in between. They watched as green became the grass and blue became the sky. The yellow sun was shining bright on white clouds drifting by. Colors changing as they touch, becoming something new. They watched me as I colored. They watched till I was through. And when I'd finally finished, I began to walk away. And as I did, the crayon box had something more to say. I do like red, said yellow, and green said so do I. And blue, you were terrific so high up in the sky. We are a box of crayons. Each one of us unique. But when we get together, the picture is complete. Welcome back to Mid-Missouri Art News. Uh, join me now. If you will, as promised, in welcoming Marcia Menendez of Bell, Missouri, speaking today with us on behalf of the best of Missouri hands. So please uh, join me as I introduce and welcome Marcia Menendez. Uh, you know, Marcia, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, 15 minutes is not long enough to really share all that we could really share or makes up the, your art world from what I understand. But we'll try to cover those highlights. And uh, you come to us uh, to the round table today as a spokesperson uh, for the best of Missouri hands, uh, but also as an artist yes. and a business lady. So please, if you will, share with us a little bit about you and those highlights that, uh, shall we say, best describe Marsha Menendez. Well, um, I live in rural Missouri with my husband. I have a studio behind my house and an outbuilding, and I am a fiber artist. Oh. So I take my, um, my art is I take previously loved clothes and I rework them or upcycle or recycle or uh, just redo them completely into new and wearable fiber arts. And you see a lot of that now in stores. Yes. Taking the old and making it yes. into a new fashion, yes. which we could not even dreamed of 50 years ago. You couldn't even go to school with a hole in your jeans or you was made fun of. And so now I've cut off now my Now you cut this off and just, <laughs> this is a remarkable. So I've got to commend you for jumping into that. Thank you, uh, thank you. That type of art, you might say, and that's with, um, uh, well, how'd you get inspired basically into doing fiber art? Well, I was a florist for 15 years, and so I've always oh. loved color, and um, I moved to a small town, and they didn't really have a florist for me to work at, and I had a small child, I and I wanted to stay home more, so I started uh, fooling around with different mediums, and I found fiber, and I really, really like it. I like oh, the color, so I like all the different textures, and so that's kind of where I found my home. It's more or less like ready-made tools that all you have to do is create. 
Kind of. So yeah. you definitely create. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's uh, that's remarkable. And uh, so you was, you never re received any inspiration from mother or grandmother of cutting up no. clothes. No. It's just something that. My mom never sewed. Never she sewed. never sewed. Oh, so I learned I'm all completely self-taught. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. I know we have we have artists as you know that. They walk up to see a Thomas Hart Benton painting, oh, and all yeah. of a sudden it comes over, and you know, but it looks like you. It's just all of a sudden something clicked mm -hmm. with the fabric. Mm -hmm. So that is mm -hmm. cool. Thank and you. now we'll be uh, presenting some of those on the timeline. There's some pictures yes. that you've shared with me. Yes. So that's uh, what more can you tell us about your inspiration uh, or? this creative world of fiber art. Um, well, You're one of the first. I've had some quilters that do mm -hmm. quilting in fiber, but the first with working with these fibers. Mm -hmm. Well, the great thing about fiber is there's so many different types of texture. And so you can mix the different kinds of texture together and create a whole new look to something. So that's one of the things that I really, really like. Now the texture on the collar that you've sewn into a nice uh, older jean jacket mm -hmm. with great colors. Uh, that's a good example, I guess. Thanks, uh, thanks. We have to wear our art, don't we? Yes, oh, yes. Sometimes <laughs> if we, we do. have it, we have to wear it. Yes. <laughs> oh, excellent. Okay. Um, so that's how you basically was not inspired, but on your own finding, on your mm -hmm. own finding, uh, should we say? Yeah. Uh, Fruition, what have you. Well, now that time is moving along. So, Marcia, we hear so much about the best of Missouri hands. I have so many friends, and I've had uh, Miss Peggy King mm -hmm. recently, a friend, uh, of mine. a friend of yours, and, and uh, with the Missouri Best of Hands. And it's so well represented through Phil Jones and his, uh, mm -hmm. uh, fe uh, his featured uh, clay works. Uh, I call it sculpture. Sculpture, he's but a sculpture it, it's, artist. it's throughout the state. So if you can, take the next five minutes and, and talk to us about the best of Missouri hands oh. and the part you play. Okay. Uh, maybe inspired somewhat to, to be able to present the best of Missouri hands to our viewers and so many people throughout the state, uh, other people that are driving from other states into the states uh, or on these different uh, venues. Um, um, Facebook, what have you. Mm -hmm. So, please, let's, how did it, how how did it come about? Who's the founder? And well, it started out as a project done by the University of Missouri Extension in the '80s. They set a uh, ad in a newspaper, and local artists across Missouri answered the ads, and so they all juried in under one blanket. Uh, title of artist. No matter what their mediums were, they were all a Best of Missouri Hands artist then. So now um, it, it kind of broke off in, in 89 and um, it became an early form of the Missouri Artisan Association, which is what we are now, um, the Missouri Artisans Association, Best of Missouri Hands. Okay. So it went from, I think, 13 original members to now we have roughly 560 members and 337 of those members are juried artists in 16 different categories. Oh, excellent. My, well that explains it. Even on uh, Instagram, I see so many, the artisans of yeah. uh, uh, Missouri, I yes. uh, have been seeing some recent uh, postings of different artwork. So it's a, really a, a melting pot it really is. Of everything, and that's what really makes it interesting. We want more people to know more about it. And I guess, so, well, what part then do you play uh, within the organization? Well, cur Artisans. currently I am the vice president, and I'm also uh, the uh, chairperson for the jury committee. So I get all the jurors together, and I set the whole jury process in motion. Uh -huh. And I am the communications uh, committee chair. So that means I'm the head of um, the Instagram. I do the whole Instagram account, which is how you contacted us. Yes. Uh -huh. and, um, and then I have several other wonderful artists who help me with the uh, the newsletter and the, uh, the, the 
Facebook page and the website, and so that's all in the communications part. So those are the two things I do. Now, in the interview with uh, Miss Peggy King, the uh, fused glass, or, um, here recently, uh, she wanted to make sure that you was commended and the best of Missouri hands. Uh, understanding, giving us the understanding that best of Missouri hands works with the artists yes. to help not only answer their questions, but promote their art, uh, whatever they uh, inspire them for that matter. So uh, I, I want to make sure that you pass on and we pass on uh, that uh, they should be commended for this effort that's come about from the very beginning, the founding days of what it's built. Mm -hmm. So now it's, uh, it's an organization that you can uh, become a member uh, uh, member of, uh, be a part of, yes. as a, do you have to be an artist or can you be an admirer? No, no we have lots of people who are general members and you can be members. a general member for $40 and a juried member for, you have to be a general member for a certain amount of time and then you can apply to be, um, have juried status and um, that's $60, but that what you get out of being even just a general member or a juried member are so many wonderful things. It's a, such a great organization. Yes. And uh, kind of give us a, an idea. Peggy ran down some things, but can you give us those wonderful things? Oh, yeah. So I recently asked on our, we have a members only page, and I recently asked everybody, hey, I'm going to be on this show. Oh. Can you tell me what you feel is a positive mm -hmm. with the Best of Missouri Hands, being a, a member of the Best of Missouri Hands? Mm -hmm. And Overwhelmingly, everyone said a sense of community, friendship, oh. great networking. Mm -hmm. um, another woman had her work at a, a show, and another person suggested to the governor or somebody in contact with the governor got in touch with her. And so they were giving her art. She does these great wooden vessels, and oh. um, I think I included a picture of her with yes. hers. And mm -hmm. so the governor was giving those out as gifts. Those were his gifts. Oh, I see. And so she was representing the whole state of Missouri with her art, and that was really mm -hmm. kind of exciting. Oh, yes. So basically, you're telling, you're telling our viewers and myself that it's not the idea. When I see, as an artist, and I see Best of Missouri Hands, and I'm thinking already, would I ever be qualified well, you don't have to be qualified to be a general, mem general member as an artist. I, I, that, that's a great understanding. So if I just wanted to enter, or I'd have to first be a general member mm -hmm. before I actually be recognized as an artist to be juried, possibly. Correct. Into, Correct. now what's that juried, once you're juried, are there, do you have um, scheduled shows or do you help? assist get uh, artists into different yes. show venues? Yes, um, one of the great things about that is we have an exhibit at the governor's mansion and so wow. uh, they just took down the jewelry exhibit and um, uh, our, our president Nancy Kohler had her jewelry up. She is a jeweler and a painter and she had a man contact her and wanted to um, have some jewelry made from one of her paintings. So she had that through, she got, he got in contact with her through her exhibit at the governor's mansion. So it definitely is advantageous yes. to an artist to yes. become a member and see if, um, and how long does it take now before you can be a jury artist if you join as a general membership? At $40? Yeah, three, three months. You have three to be months. A, oh. a general member for three months and then you can apply for juried membership. Oh, excellent. That's, that's great. And I know it answers my questions and many, many more. It's like a big question. Well, now, contact information, where do we go for that? And the website? Uh, you can contact uh, us through the website, which is www.bestofmissourihands.org. And uh, we have a Facebook page, the Missouri Artisans Association. Oh, okay. You can contact us through there. You can t contact us through our Instagram page, which is the Best of Missouri Hands right. on Instagram. So we want to think about marrying, as a marriage, the Artisans of Missouri, mm -hmm. Best of Missouri Hands. That's uh, basically uh, the same. Yes, I, I believe that we are the only uh, Artisans Association across all of Missouri that takes all forms of art. 
Right. Uh, now, we're talking about, again, going back to your fabric, love of fabric, mm -hmm. uh, you ha I also understand that uh, our, you represent your own company today called A&M Accessories. A&M &M Accessories. And that's this, this clothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, hopefully we'll get on the timeline some of these clothing pieces that you've modeled or you. someone. And uh, so, so we can see what she's put together. It's fantastic. Well, uh, Marcia. Again, we're just about out of time. I want to thank you so much on behalf of JCTV, uh, Mid-Missouri Art News, and, and um, myself for uh, bringing uh, so much to the table, contributing to Mid-Missouri Art News, and actually making it a learning and uh, informational experience for us all. Any closing comments? You know, we are committed to helping artisans across the state and we are here as a resource for all artists. So right. please feel free to reach out because we, we really want to further uh, the arts in our communities. And if you want to know more about the A&M accessories, I understand, well, if you're, you can be reached through that website indirectly, I guess. Yes, you can reach me okay. through any of the Best of Missouri Hands websites or I'm on Instagram as Marsha underscore Menendez. Okay, great, great. Well, once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, JCTV producer Gloria and Lo. It's great to work with and the crew here at JCTV. I thank you, our viewers, once again for watching and being part of the, the JCTV viewership. It's been a great experience these last two years. I look forward to more time with you out there, wherever, in China through YouTube, I get so much back. A lot of China viewers and the, the Spanish communities. So thank you all. Well, look for more mid Missouri Art News right here at JCTV and naturally on YouTube. I'm Rick Jason. See you next time. Mm -hmm.